Hey and welcome back to another Dark Fall tutorial. In today's video we're going to be looking at how to do the long shadow effect. So the first thing you need to do is align the camera to the front view then shift A, add in a plane then press R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. You can rotate that. So to align the camera you just want to press number pad 1 then control alt number pad 0 to align the camera to the front view and scale this plane up just so it's bigger than the, uh, the camera we can go ahead and shift A, add in a text. And we also want to rotate this as well, so press R, X, 9, 0, and then hit enter. Okay, so tap into edit mode, just delete the text there. Just type in your own text. I'm just going to use long shadow as an example. Scale it up and reposition. Okay, so now we can go to the font tab. I'm going to give this some extrusion, so down under geometry, we just want to increase this extrusion value. And how much extrusion you give it is entirely up to you. So I'm going to set the extrusion value to be about 0.2, should be good. And the text is quite sharp, so you might want to give it, give it some bevel, so increase the depth. And also you want to give this some resolution as well. I'll just show you, if we increase this depth to something extreme, we can see how it works. So a resolution of zero is terrible. <laughs> so about four or three should be good. And that'll be, yeah, so that's okay for our text. Okay, so you can give this some colors now with materials if you want, but I'm going to do that later on with using the video sequence editor. A shift A, add in a lamp and down to sun. I want to reposition this on. It doesn't really matter where you position this, to be honest. It's the direction of the line that we want to focus on. So I'm just going to move this to the left. Then jump into camera view by pressing numpad 0. Then press R to rotate this lamp. And we just want to point it this way so the shadows kind of point that way. <laughs> that makes sense. And jump over to the sun tab. And if we increase this size, so I'm going to show you an example at point 1. So this is at point 1. And this is at point 3. So the more we increase this value, the softer the shadows are going to be. So it's up to you how much softness you want. So I'm going to increase the strength to 5. And give that a render, see how that looks. Okay, so we need to go to the world properties. And down here under color, for the surface color, let's just reduce this. It's just far too bright right now. Maybe just increase it a little bit. Yeah, it looks okay. Okay, so we only need a few more tweaks before we can uh, jump over to the video sequence editor. So let's select the text, go to the font tab again, and now you just want to choose the um, yeah choose a font for your text. Make sure it's a nice font. I'll throw a link up at the top so you can go to a, a website which shares free fonts. Okay, so now with the lamp selected, we want to press I and then add a keyframe. We want to add a location rotation. Then we, we want to jump ahead, let's say say frame 60 or something. Then we want to move this over here, then press R to rotate. And again, make sure you're in camera view while you do this. And then again, press I, add a location rotation keyframe. So press E while hovered over the timeline as well to uh, set the end frame. Now the movement of this light um, is going to speed up and slow down, so I'm just going to split this window, change it to a graph editor. While hovered over the graph editor, press V, and then choose Vector. Now as we play through this, I'll just join this again. As we play through this, it's going to be at a constant speed, it's not going to speed up or slow down. And that's entirely up to you, how you want the effect to look. You don't have to do that. Okay, so just want to change a few settings as well if you want to save this as a video file let's increase the samples as well um, I'm probably going to do around 150 samples make sure you set the output as well it's important and uh, one more thing make sure you select this icon here which is next to the seed this will make sure that the noise is um, it's not static it's actually moving around it doesn't look too bad but once you've rendered that out, I'm also going to render a mask. So I'm just going to add a, a black color to this text here. So I've already rendered my um, video file out. Now I'm just going to change this color to black. 
I'm going to delete the lamp and I'm also going to delete the background I'm just going to take one render so it's a black and white image and this is just going to be a mask for the, um, the video sequence editor so if you're rendering this out and you've got some camera movement you're going to render out the mask as well as a, uh, an image sequence or a movie clip so make sure you do that open up a new file, jump over to the video sequence editor shift A, add in our movie clip And again, you don't have to do things this way. You could have already had color to it before you rendered it out, but I just think it's, uh, I find I've got more control this way. So I set the end frame. Okay, so scrolling down here, let's just have a look. So you can add a color balance if you want and add some colors that way. So just change these colors to whatever you want. Adds a touch of color. What I'm going to do is just add an image and overlay it and then um, just add the color that way so so it's entirely up to you how you do it you can do it by modifiers or you can edit some images I'm just gonna add some images so shift A go down to image jump to the top make sure we set the length to 60 same as the movie clip uh, for now I'm just gonna change the blend to add in fact, you can play around with these and you get different effects depending on which uh, blend mode you use, so it depends what kind of effect you go for. But I'm definitely going to reduce the opacity for now. The reason why I added the mask, why I, ma I didn't want the text to be sort of blended into the background, so go down to modifiers, add in a mask value. You want to press A to select everything and then press G to move them all up one layer. So I can add in an image. Shift A, add in an image. And this image is that mask that I, um, we created before. So it's just a black and white image of the text. So again, make sure we set the length to 60. Then select, the, uh, then select that image that we added. Go to the mask and then select the mask. So we just need to change the blend mode. So jump back up to the top. I want to change this from multiply to alpha over, let's find alpha over, there we go. So again, if you wanted to um, add some color to the background, you could have done that before we rendered it out. I prefer to do it this way since it saves time and I've got more control, uh, but it's up to you how your workflow is. Um, it's entirely up to you. Go ahead, add some more effects in. So I'm gonna just select the movie clip, just play around with the values, to make the shadows a bit darker as well. And then yeah, go ahead and render it out. So, so make sure you set the file type and also if you're using audio, set the encoding type as well. Also set the output. So you can go ahead now and add some more effects in or add some more colors, whatever you want. So this technique can be used for quite a few different things. If you use it for something and you, know, you make something cool with it, make sure you throw a link in the comments below. It's always cool to see what you guys do with these tutorials. So hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like. And as always, thanks for watching.